On behalf of Pastor Joe L. Newsom and First Lady Annette Newsom, welcome to Be Ye Holy Ministries. Giving unto God who is the head of my life. Thank you for joining us on Wednesday night's Bible study coming from Be Ye Holy Ministry from our pastor, Pastor Joel Newsom, First Lady, First Lady Annette Newsom. I'm going to start off with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us here on tonight, safe and sound, in the name of Jesus, giving us the grace and mercy of giving us another day to see in your honor, Lord God. Lord God, let our me decrease as you increase in me as I teach your people the devotional reader, Lord God, and look also over the teacher on tonight. They will bring to your people the ministry that is in her to feed your people your word in the name of Jesus, Lord God. In your name we pray, Father God. Amen. The title of the lesson on this, tonight is the Ministry of Pain. I will be coming to you with the devotional reading, which will be coming from Proverbs 3, verses 1 through 10. Proverbs 3, verses 1 through 10. And it reads, My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. And lean in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be heath, health in thy navel, and marrow to thy bones. Honor the Lord with thy substance, and with the first fruits of, thine, of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new vine. So this is talking about having wisdom. When you fear in the Lord, not only does grace and mercy come about you, but your heart can be filled with health. Your body can be filled with health. You will also have longevity and life when you fear the Lord. Lean not unto your own understanding. You have to understand the ways of the Lord because the ways that God goes with doing things is totally different from the way that man does things. We will never understand exactly the way that God is going to come. That's why he said lean not onto your own understanding, but lean unto his understanding. He will never fear you. He said come to him always. When you come to God always, he will always be there for you. That's why you will have no problem with leaning on him because he knows all things. He can do all things. All things are with him. There is understanding in him. And it says in verse 4, it says, So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. So not only will you have longevity, you will also find favor in the, Lord, in the Lord as well when you come to him. I am finished with my devotional reader. I am now going to pass on to the teacher on tonight, which is none other than our First Lady, First Lady Annette Newsom. Greetings in the name of Jesus and good evening to our Facebook friends. We thank God for being here on today, and I can say that God is our strength, and he is our refuge. He is a very present help in trouble, and we truly thank God for he is a present help in trouble in these times. I would like to welcome you to the Be Ye Holy Ministries, and my name is Annette Newsom. I am the First Lady of Be Ye Holy Ministries. Also. I'm so excited that you are going to be a part of our Bible band lesson on tonight. And today is April the 15th, and, uh, 2020, and our topic is the ministry of pain. The ministry of pain. 
in our background scriptures are coming from Ruth, the first chapter, the first through the 16th verses, and Luke, the 13th chapter, and the 11th through the 17th verses, and also Titus, the second chapter, and the third verse. Our central verse is also coming from Isaiah, the 61st chapter, and the third verse. Just want to read um, a little bit on the central verse. It says that, uh, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And that is the, our central verse, is uh, Isaiah, the 61st chapter and the third verse. Now we're talking about the ministry of pain, the ministry of pain. Sometimes we ask, why, why? Why did I have to go through this loss? And then we may say, why, why this pain? And as uh, if God made a mistake, we ask it as if God made a mistake in in one of in our lives. Pain is sometimes our, is something that everyone experiences in their lives, and we experience it at one time or another. It is not something that people ask. It's not what I ask for. I, I know that much, and it's not what we ask for. We don't just go out and ask for pain. It is something that is part of, of the cycle called life. Pain is a distressing feeling often caused by intense or damaging stimuli. Usually it is caused by injury or illness or some physical suffering or distress which causes pain. So for example, when a woman travels in childbirth, she, she expects some kind of physical pain. That pain she is expecting at one time. She knows that her pain is going to come at a certain time. And so in that pain uh, and expecting it, she is able to prepare her mind for the pain. So when life ends, there's another example, we know that death comes. And so many times this is the time of trauma as well as pain. Life is full of hurts, that causes pain which must be dealt with. But what I, you know, the reason I can say to you, I'm here today to encourage somebody on today. Do our study lesson, the ministry of pain. Because I'm reminded of a song that was sung by a gospel singer, uh, Dorothy Norwood, that says, there has got to be a little rain in your life to appreciate the sun. Sometimes we got to go through a little rain. We got to go through a little storm. Every now and then, just so we can appreciate the things that God has done for us. So also, while I'm uh, thinking on how we, have, we go through our troubles, our tests, and our trials, it's not as if we're going through it for nothing. Because in 2 Timothy 3 and 12, it says that, Yea, all that will live godly shall suffer persecution. So some of our pain is not always a physical pain. Sometimes we go through emotional pain and mental pain because of who we believe in. Sometimes when we stand up for Christ, we suffer pain. Sometimes we go through persecutions, and that's not always a beautiful feeling. And so... We must be ready to suffer for Jesus. And sometimes we may have pain in our bodies, which is a life cycle that we go in. That's, that's what it's called life. There's going to be some pain in our life to appreciate the sunshine. And so in 2 Peter 4, 12 and 13, it says, Beloved, think it not strange. You may be going through a pain today, whether it be a loss of a loved one, maybe sickness, Maybe you have an illness where the doctor said that there's no way out, there's no cure. But know this, my friend, that in 2 Peter 4 and 12 and 13, it says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning 
the fiery trial that is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice, it say, in as much as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. And don't forget Romans 8 and 28 said, And we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God and are the called according to his purpose. Because sometimes when we're going through the pain, we do need sometimes people to help us through that kind of pain. And so tonight we're going to talk about a woman, Naomi, and her daughter-in-law who suffered like pain. They had a loss of their husband. And we're going to see how they dealt with their pain. We're going to see how God blessed them through their pain. Because remember we said all things work together for the good to them that love the Lord and to them that are the call according to his purpose. And I'm excited to talk about this lesson on today. And I hope that it will encourage you on tonight. That even in your pain there's, there's some joy. Even in your pain, you can rejoice and be glad in it because know that there is something good that can happen out of your pain. So remember in 2 Timothy 2 and 10, it says that therefore, uh, Paul said, I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glo glory. So he said, I'm not just suffering for myself. He said, I'm suffering for the elect's sake, that they might have salvation, which is in Christ Jesus, which is our eternal, eternal glory. And so sometimes we're suffering for somebody else. Sometimes we're going through our pain for somebody else. And you may say, what do you mean by going through pain for somebody else? Sometimes God allow us, he allow us to go through that sickness to allow us to be able to understand what it's like to go through a sickness that we don't understand, the doctor don't understand, and then he is preparing us for a blessing on the other side so that we could be a blessing to someone else that is going to suffer that same situation. But the best part is, is that you overcame the sickness and you're able to tell someone else how you overcame the pain of the sickness through Christ Jesus. Yes. And so, my friend, I tell you tonight and to the saints here at Be Holy that the trouble that we're experiencing in our life is not an all bad thing. We have to believe that in our troubles that God is with us and that God is working it out for our good. So let us take a look at these three women, Ruth, Naomi, and Orpah. These three women suffered a great loss. And so we're going to be looking at Ruth, the first chapter, the first through the 16th verses. And we're going to take a look at that verse, and then we're going to look at also Luke, the 13th chapter, the 11th through the 17th verse. And I would like for you to read along with me. I want to start first of all, and we're also going to talk about an older woman who was sick for 18 years. She was sick for 18 years, and Jesus healed her. So we want to look at Luke, the 13th chapter. Let us go to that. Luke 13, and we want to begin with the 11th verse. In Luke the 11th verse, Luke the 13th chapter, it say, And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years. And it say, And was bowed together, and could in no wise lift herself. And, and when Jesus, Jesus saw her, her he, he called her, her to, to him, him, and, and said, said unto her, her Woman, thou art loosed from, from thy infirmities. infirmities. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. 
and the rulers of the synagogue answered with indignation, because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day, and said unto the people, There are six days in which men are to work, and then therefore come and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. The Lord then answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, doth not each of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? And ought not, not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan, Satan has bound, to these eighteen, these 18 years, years, be loosed from, from the bond on the, on the Sabbath, Sabbath day? day. And when he had said these things, all his adversaries were ashamed, and all the people rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. Now let us go to Ruth, the first chapter. And starting with the first verse, it says, Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land. And a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. And the and name, the of, name the of the man was Elimelech, and, and the name of his, of his wife, wife Naomi, Naomi, and the, and the name, name of his two, two sons, sons Malam and Chilion, Ephrodites of Bethlehem, Bethlehem Judea, Judah, and they, they came, came into the country of Moab, of Moab and, and continued, continued there. there. And Eliami, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left and her two sons. And they took them wives of the women of Moab. The name, the name of the of one was Oprah, and, and the name of the other Ruth. And, and they dwelled there about ten years. years. And Malon and Chilion died also, both of them, and the woman was left of her two sons and her husband. Then she arose with her daughters in law that she might return from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab how that the Lord had visited his people in giving them bread. Wherefore she went forth out of the place where she was, and her two daughters in law with her, and they went on the way to return unto the land of Judah. And Naomi said unto her two daughters-in-law, Go, return each to her mother's house. The Lord deal kindly with you, as ye have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant you that you may find rest, each of you, in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voice and wept. And they and said, they said unto, unto her, her, Surely we will return, return to thee unto thy, thy people. And Naomi said, Turn again, thy daughters, why will ye go with me? Are there yet any more sons in my womb, that they may be your husbands? Turn, Turn again, my daughters, go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. If I should say, I have hope, if I should have a husband also tonight, and should also bear sons. Would ye tarry for them till they were grown? Would you stay for them from having husbands? May, nay, my daughters, for it grieveth me much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord is gone out against me. And, and they, they lifted up their voice, their voice and, and wept again. And Orpah kissed, kissed her mother in law, but Ruth played unto her. her. And she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back unto her people and unto her gods. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. And Ruth said, Entreat me not mean to leave thee, thee, or to or return, return from, from following after, after thee. For, for whether thou goest, I will, I will go, and, and whether thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy, thy people shall be my, my people, and thy God my God. God. Praise the Lord. We thank God for the reading of his word, and his word is blessed. As we look at the, uh, our scripture lessons, our scripture lessons, uh, I want to talk about first, we're going to start with the woman that was, uh, had an issue. Uh, she had a disease, and she was crippled for 18 years. 
As you can see, let's look closely at this particular scripture where it say that the woman, she had a spirit of infirmity. And she had this infirmity for 18 years. And this infirmity caused her to be bowed down. Notice, just think about it. For 18 years, she was bowed down. And she could not look up. She could not straighten herself. And so it say that Jesus saw her. Jesus saw her. The priest didn't see her. Her friends didn't see her in this way. But Jesus saw her and he did something about it. I'm sure her friends saw her and they could do nothing. The priest saw her and he could do nothing. But when Jesus saw her, he called her out and said, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. Yes. Letting us know the power of God. Yes. Now let's look at this a little closer. What is the spirit? You may ask, what is this spirit of infirmity that it would cause this woman to be bowed down and, 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 and not able to raise herself up? Right. Well, as I was studying, the spirit of infirmity is a spirit that caused the woman to be crippled. It caused her to not be able to, to straighten herself up. In other words, it was a demon that affected her health. The demon caused her to be crippled. She was affected by a evil spirit. And so the reason why we could say that because if you go down a little further, it say uh, here where Jesus spoke and say, Out not this woman being a daughter of Abraham whom Satan have bound Lo, these 18 years be loose from this bondage. So she was crippled by the evil spirit, which is Satan. And so, in other words, when you look at it, she was in bondage and she needed to be free. Imagine this woman. She could not do the things that she normally could do. She could not, you know, go out as fast as she could. As You know, sometimes we want to walk a little faster. She couldn't. And notice if in her walking, she couldn't straighten up, straighten up to see like we can see when we walk straight and we can see straight ahead. She had a whole lot of things working against her. But Jesus saw this woman. And he saw her in her pain. Because we don't know how her nights were. We don't know how it was to sleep in the night where you've been bowed down all night, all day. And then at night you still bowed down when you're getting ready to rest. We don't know the pain that she was in. And also she couldn't do much for herself because she was bowed down, you know, in a way that it disabled her. But it said that Jesus saw her. In other words, when he looked at her, he saw her tears. He saw her pain. He saw the disgrace and the shame that it, that it brought on her. You know, sometimes we could be, and uh, some people could be crippled and, and it caused people to look at them or it caused people to stare or wonder why did they get that way. But Jesus understood her need. He had the ministry of pain. He was the healer of her body. Didn't God say that he is the God that heal us? And this day he called her out. He said, woman. And I pray that God will call somebody out tonight in your pain. In which he is calling someone tonight. And he's saying, woman, man, be healed from your infirmity. If you just believe him and trust him, that you can be healed. Uh, Sister Teacher, uh, try and get an understanding. So are you saying pain is a ministry? I am saying that God gives us a ministry to deal with people in pain. 
when I look okay. at the ministry of pain, I would say that it is the ministry of healing. Okay, yeah, I just wanted some clarification because when I saw the subject, the ministry of pain, I didn't know pain was a ministry. And that's why I needed some clarification. Yeah. I thank you very much. I changed the subject to the ministry. That's what I forgot to tell you. I, my subject would be the ministry of healing. The ministry of healing. If I would, you know, define ministry of pain, I say it is the ministry of healing. Because in the lesson today, we are talking about people who have been uh, dealing with pain and those who have been sick, like the woman who was a cripple for 18 years, she was, uh, had a crippling situation going on, and Jesus healed her. And so he ministered to her by healing her of her condition. And so um, we tonight we are understanding that there are those who have the ministry of healing, but it does not come to us uh, by our own wits or by our own strength. In order to have a ministry of healing, it is something that God gives us. God has uh, gifted us to have that ministry. It is, it is one that God calls us into. And so um, I know it talks about it in Ephesians. If you can get that for me in Ephesians when it talks about the different offices in the church. In Ephesians, the fourth chapter, these ministries are for the perfecting of the church and the ministry of healing is one of them. And so if we go to uh, Ephesians, the fourth chapter, and we start with the 11th verse. Can you read that, uh, Sister Wright? Ephesians 4 and 11 reads, And he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. Read on. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. On. Till we all come in the unity of the faith, and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Amen. And also, uh, we want to look at the 12th verse where it says that the purpose of these ministries is for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, and for the edifying of the body of Christ. This is why he gave us these different ministries. And um, there is another scripture that talks about, that goes more in extensive. Um, it talks about the miracles, how he gives us to be able to perform miracles. He also gives us the ability to heal the sick. And so when he called the disciples, he gave them power to heal those who were sick and to cast out devils and to raise up the dead. And today he do give us power to heal the sick, to raise the dead, and to lay hands on the sick that they may recover. So the minister of healing is no uh, strange thing because this is what Jesus came and he gave to his disciples to do because he wanted us to perfect the ministry and to edify the body of Christ and it's for the perfecting of the saints. And if we go to Mark the 16th chapter and the 15th verse it says, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they eat, drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. 
So did I answer your question? Yes. So we talked about the spirit of infirmity. God give us power over the spirit of infirmity because we just read it. He give us power to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And Jesus uh, being the healer of our bodies healed the woman of her sickness. And so we did talk about the spirit of infirmity. So we can understand also that in this day we, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. The enemy, yes, he do come and attack our bodies. His purpose is to destroy us. What does it say? That, his, that he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He comes to destroy us. But God has given us power. And I wanted you to look at Ephesians, the sixth chapter, where it says, We wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and against powers and against the rulers of the darkness of this world and against the spiritual wickedness in high places. So yes, the devil can attack our bodies. And so 2 Corinthians tells us, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. But we have the power to cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And so let's look at our lesson uh, concerning Ruth. Ruth. We see here that Ruth was a, a woman of faith. But she had something to happen to her that she, she uh, felt sorrow for. She felt bitterness about it. And so it said that, first of all, Ruth and her husband was from Bethlehem. I'm, I'm sorry, Naomi and her husband, Eliam Leach, was from Bethlehem. And we know that Bethlehem um, means the house of bread. And to break it down, Bethel means a house. Beth means house. And Laham means bread. And so when you put it together, it's the house of bread. So they left the house of bread to go to a place where they felt that they could make a good life for themselves. But let's look at something. I want to show you what was going on in the, in the time and day uh, during the uh, Ruth and Naomi's time. If you look at Ruth and uh, look at Judges 21 and 24 and 25, it gives us a background history of what life was like for the Israelites. This is what was happening. It says that in um, Judges 21, 24, and 25, it says, And the children of Israel departed thence at that time. Every man to his tribe and to his tribe and to his family. And they went out from thence every man to his inheritance. Now take note of the 25th verse. It said, in those days there was no king in Israel. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. So here in this, in this look at the first verse and Ruth, the first chapter and the first verse, it says, now it came to pass in those days when the judges ruled and there was a famine in the land. Now it is said that there was no king. There was no king during this time. The judges ruled. And the people, if you look at how the, world, how the world was working, they were doing what they wanted to do. You know, and, and that's what it said. They did whatever was right in their own eyes. And, then, and so during the time of Ruth, Judges were still judging the land. And give your background history of who was um, Eliamich, Naomi's husband. It started like this, is that Nashon, who was the prince of Judah, was the father of Salmon, and Salmon was the father of Boaz, Boaz, 
And Boaz was the father of Oped, and Oped was the father of Jesse. And you will find that in 1 Chronicles, the second chapter, 11 through the 12th verse, and Luke, the third chapter, the third chapter, and the 32nd verse. So remember that Rahab was the wife of Salmon. Rahab, remember, she was the harlot that allowed to help the, the uh, children of Israelites when they uh, got into Jericho. She helped them out and assisted the Israelites in capturing the city. And uh, she lived in also Jericho. So she hid the, the two men who were sent to recount the city. So it was counted to her for righteousness. So you could find that in Joshua 2, 1 through the second chapter and the 24th verse. So also, we want to understand and look at how that in Bethlehem, give you a little history, is that Bethlehem was the place where David was crowned king. And um, also it was called the city of David and it was where Jesus was born. And that we find that in the New Testament in Luke the second chapter, the 11th verse, Luke the second chapter and the fourth verse. So you want to know what do all of this have to do with this? To show you, if you look at the generation of Ruth and Boaz, we're going to find out that Ruth did not endure the pain and suffering that she endured for nothing. And neither did Naomi. Okay, so it starts out with Naomi and her husband goes to a land and they go there because there was a famine in their land in Bethlehem. And so when they get to this land of the Moabite, in the country of the Moab, Moab her husband gets sick and he dies. And then the son gets sick, both sons. No, the sons do not get sick, but they die. And so now Ruth is left without a husband and her daughter-in-laws are left without husbands. And so now it say in the 8th verse, where it say, And Naomi said unto her two daughters-in-law, Go, return each to her mother's house. The Lord deal kindly with you, as you have dealt with the dead and with me. Now, we can see now how Ruth is feeling right now. Notice what she said. She said for them to go back to their house. Go back home. In other words, I don't have anything to offer you. Now, you know, some of us don't know what it's like to lose a husband, but, our, but all of us know what it's like to lose somebody. And that is a painful, disturbing thing. And it's emotional pain as well as mental. And so Ruth was in a low state. And she was not happy. To where she said that the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. And so notice that Ruth had two good daughter-in-laws that took care of her and they respected her greatly. But at this time, Ruth needed more than just her daughter-in-laws to help her through this pain. And so Ruth, it tells us, decided to go and return back to her homeland, which is Bethlehem. And how she decided to return is that she heard that there was bread in Bethlehem. Sometimes God will just let you hear a word to bring you back home. Sometimes he'll just let you hear just a little word. Sometimes he may say, it is well. Sometimes he may say it's going to be all right. And sometimes he gives us a word of direction. And he gave, her, her, gave Naomi a word of direction where he, where he was able to, where she was able to hear it, that there was bread in Bethlehem. So that was her word of direction that it is time to go back home. So... One of the things that I would question is why do you think that Ruth was bitter? Why did she call herself Myra 
instead of Naomi because Naomi means pleasant and good and she didn't want to be thought of as pleasant and good anymore. So I so she was calling herself bitter now. And so bitter bitter Let's see what bitter means. Why did Naomi, I keep saying Ruth, but why did Naomi call herself bitter? Naomi called herself bitter. Now let's, let's, I want to first of all define the word bitter first before we answer that question. Bitter means angry, hurt, or resentful because of one's bad experiences or a sense of unjust treatment. Synonyms mean agree, dissatisfied, discontent. So why did she consider, why did Naomi consider, consider herself bitter? Naomi considered herself as being bitter because of all the things she had lost. She lost her husband and she was feeling, she wasn't happy. She was in a lot of pain because because of that and she felt like that there was no coming back from that so that's why she was feeling bitter um and she was also not feeling bad because of herself she was feeling pain because of her her family as well as for her children as well as for the loss of her when her when her sons died the the their um, their wives was also in pain, so she felt their pain, mm -hmm. and that's why she felt um, felt like she was she was being it was better she was bitter because of their pain of how, how they were feeling. Amen. Also, when we look at it, Naomi had left her hometown of bread where she was full. And she went to a land and suffered trauma, suffered pain, and suffered, you know, where she felt like, you know, that she was not in the best place that she could be. And she came out of the land of, of bread and went into another land, and then she comes back empty. Well, she, she uh, also said why she did not want to be called Naomi. She said because the Almighty had dealt very bitterly with her. So she was blaming her experience on God, mm -hmm. as we as saints of God so often do when we go through various trials and tribulations that are not comfortable for us. We blame God. We don't eternalize and see if we've done something to cause these things you know, we blame God. And so uh, in the 20th verse, she says, call me not Naomi, call me Myra, where as you already articulated, means bitter. She said, for the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. So she was blaming God for her, what she was going through. And Amen. like I said, so often time, we do the same thing. Amen. And let's take another look at it. And it say that, and she said unto them, uh, as you read, call me not Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty have dealt very bitterly with me. And she said, I went out full, and the Lord have brought me home again empty. Then call ye me Naomi, saying, The Lord have testified against me, and the Almighty hath afflicted me. So Naomi returned, and Ruth the Mobias. Moabites, her daughter-in-law with her, which returned out of the country of Moab, and they came to Bethlehem in the beginning of barley harvest. So she is saying she even felt afflicted by God. She felt afflicted by God. She felt empty by God because she said, the Lord has sent me home empty. So she um, so which brings me to talk about when we go, the, the different attitudes that we take on when we suffer pain.
pain well when we go through uh, things that make us have a sorrow a thing that causes us to feel like God has left us so when we look at uh, Naomi some of the things that I say we deal with in this life is that when we go through suffering or when we go through pain or when something touch this flesh we automatically think something is wrong well we think that maybe you know we done something wrong and maybe God is against us and so it brings me to how some people feel guilt or they feel shame well, um, so, well Susan Teach you gotta look at too that uh, and, and can't really fault Naomi because she was following the leading of her husband Amalek but where did they go? They went to the Moabites. Right. And they dwelt the Mo among the Moab. And so that was a problem, you know, because we know the Moabites were not godly people. You know, that is the Moabites, you know, that is the, their origin was the result of sin between Lot and his daughters. You know, when you go back and read the history. So why, you have to, Amalek not here to testify, you had to ask why would Amalek take his family to a land into a country that is ungodly you know and while there you know this, this family uh for the kind of march shows um how bad things were spiritually and physically already in their lives you Amen. know so when you look here you know and everything else you know um we see what happened during this day there amlick died until the two boys die mm -hmm. you know and everything so they went from bad to worse. Yeah. Like a lot of us do. We go from bad to worse. And sometimes we realize things are not as bad as we thought they were. Mm -hmm. You know, but it'd be the trick of the enemy. And they went from bad to worse. You know, they left their homeland to go somewhere where God was not even referenced. Yes. You know, and things went from bad to worse. Amen. And I, it's in the lesson, it's showing us the different. Uh, emotions that Naomi went through and it sometimes reflect us because sometimes when we go through our tests and trials we sometimes feel uh, that God has left us and why do we sometimes feel that God has left us when we go through a, a rough time when it seems like um, like the rug has been pulled from under us or like the odds are against us why do we feel like God has left us and sometimes we feel like God has left us is that you have a well one of the reviewers got here I believe the power of the mind in, in the mouth has the power to literally change your reality and so and we know the Bible says life and death is in the power of the tongue and so he's saying here that Naomi was exactly what she spoke into existence mm -hmm. Amen. And sometimes we can do uh, ourselves injustice when we speak negative in our situations. So uh, in our lesson today, we're going to see how um, Ruth, how she handled the situation when she got back into Bethlehem. I like where when she went uh, to uh, Naomi was telling her what to do and how to approach Boaz and Ruth would say would tell her that she was she was it's when she said go daughter and Ruth would go and do what Naomi said without any question or anything and so she didn't um, rebuttal at what Naomi said because she trusted in the wisdom that Naomi said so sometimes we can um, not listen to those who wants who mentors us or those who have more knowledge than us because sometimes we may think that we know more than what that person knows but I like how uh, Ruth was so submissive to her mother-in-law that she allowed her mother-in-law to steer her and guide her into her blessing and so it's so the question again was why do we always um, 
And then the pastor answered that. Can you repeat that last part that you answered on the question that was asked? Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Yes, yeah, so we learned that life and death is in the power of the tongue. And you can understand Naomi, when she told her friends to call Mara, that was her choice. That was decision made in her mind. Mm -hmm. And the devil attacks us in our mind, you know. And Naomi uh, has this impression that this all is of God. She, uh, God did this. She's blaming God, you know. And uh, he allowed this. How could this happen to me, you know, which leads to uh, Naomi has the wrong view of God. And many times when we go through our storms, we ha it gives us a wrong view of God. Look at what's happening now with this pandemic. And a lot of people have the wrong view of God and everything else. And so Naomi has swallowed the pill of bitterness. That's all, and that is all about. It never all of, and one thing we have to realize when we're going through our trials and tribulation, it's never all about us. It's about Jesus, how he can get the glory out of our life, you know. So God is more concerned about our holiness than he is about our happiness. Yeah. God is more concerned about our walk with him than he is about our happiness. Because if we, if we please the Lord, if our ways please the Lord, if our ways please the Lord, yeah. he said our enemies will even be at peace with us. So we have to ask ourselves, is the decisions we make in our life, is this pleasing to God. Amen. Amen. And, and that's what is very important because as in Proverbs 3 it say, uh, lean not to your own understanding. We are not to lean to our own understanding. But we, is to tr we are to trust the Lord. And he shall direct our path. You know, because if you're not careful, bitterness causes us to lose sight. It causes yes. us to lose sight. Yes, it does. On who God is. You know, um, we start focusing on what we lost yes. versus what we have. See, she focused on what she had lost versus what she still had. Yes. You know, and so when we look at bitterness, you know, bitterness, bitterness causes us to lose sight of who God is. You know, and uh, bitterness, you know, is basically rooted in our misunderstanding of God in the, in the characteristic and the nature of God. Yes. You know, and so... We look at this, and uh, this is, you know, and that's why, um, you know, when I look at this subject, it did not, it did not sit well with me. But I have learned that whatever state I find myself in, to be content. Yes. Now I've had to minister in pain. Mm -hmm. I've had to minister in hurt, you know. But God has not given me a ministry of pain, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Yes, I looked at the lesson, and I was, I wanted to understand what was this ministry of pain and I never heard of ministry of pain so I according to the lesson according to what the word is talking about it is talking about ministry of healing where people are being healed through the power of God people are being set free through the power of God and also to pick it back on what the husband says, Naomi, she, just like I said, she couldn't see the good for seeing all of the bad. Mm -hmm. She couldn't get the, 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 she couldn't get the support and love that she needed from her daughter-in-laws because they tried to comfort her, but she still wasn't getting, they wasn't giving her what it is that she needed. Yeah. The provision that she needed from them because she was in so much pain. But like I said, she couldn't see what she had already had. And what she already had was still the love of her daughter-in-laws that was still willing to, well, at least root. She was ready to, not all but the Ruth, Ruth was a ride or die. She was going to go with her no matter what. Amen. You no, know, and that was something that um, she couldn't, couldn't see. She didn't even want her to, she wanted both of the daughters to go back to their home. But Ruth wanted to stay with her, to be with her, to support her and everything. But she couldn't feel that because of all the pain and bitterness that she was feeling from all for loss and she was blaming it on God she was like why you let all of this happen lost my husband lost my, my sons and in this dry land and yeah. nothing is going right so so you gotta always know that there's always a light they always said there's always a light at the end of the tunnel I believe that with God there's a light through the tunnel 
because God said that he will always be there with you no matter what. Amen. And we're going to find that the light through the tunnel was going back home. When she heard that bread was in Bethlehem, you know, she knew that it was time to go back home. And because bread is what she needed. She needed to be back home where in the house of bread. And also her, um, her answer was going to be through a, a relative uh, named Boaz. And that's how God brought, we're going to talk about how God brought uh, Ruth and um, Naomi to the place of blessings. And um, first of all, I want to give you a background of how, you know, her husband, Elia Leach, uh, his, his name means my God is king, and his wife Naomi means pleasing. But after the death of her son, Malon, Malon means sickness, and Chilion means wasting. So uh, you can understand why she felt the bitterness here, because when they got over into this land, we could see what it was like, looking at the, the uh, meaning of their names. Um, so when we look also in our today's lesson, it is centered around a woman named Ruth. Ruth was a Moabite woman who was not from the household of Israel. Her name appears on one of the two books of the Bible that are named after women. She lived during the time that God had judges over his people, during a time of great unfaithfulness, as I was showing you uh, how that they had no king and they were, had judges in the land, but they did whatever was right in their own sight. And so they, this was during a time of unfaithfulness and during a time of great apostasy. So this lesson will show us six areas that pain was at work in the life of Ruth. First of all, Ruth was able to enjoy these six blessings in her life because of the pain that she had to go through. Pain brought her to, number one, provision. Number two, it brought her to protection. Three, preparations. Four, positiveness. Five, prayer and praise. And six, purpose. We want to talk about provision. Provision. The first provision was when they got back, when they was uh, in the 22nd verse, where it say, Naomi returned and Ruth the Moabitess, her daughter-in-law, with Ruth, with her, which returned out of the country of Moab, and they came to Bethlehem in the beginning of barley harvest. So that you will find in Ruth, the first chapter in the 22nd verse. Here God is making provision for them. He is making a way. And you know that God is our provider. He will make a way for us. And that's why uh, I look at the scripture where it say that cast all your cares upon him for he careth for you and so no matter what kind of situation we're in if we lean on Jesus if we it say in all thy ways acknowledge him it is say and he shall direct your path and to tell us not to trust not in our own understanding trust not in our own understanding and so she heard the word about bread. That's the provision and the protection. When they see, I ha we have to go a little bit further than the first chapter to be able to understand why we're we talking about Ruth and why we're we talking about, we understand that uh, Naomi uh, experienced pain and she wanted to be called bitter. But we got to see the end result of what happened to Naomi and what happened to Ruth. Because there was some good. We don't want to just talk about how they were in pain from the loss of their husbands. Because, you know, back in the day when they were without husbands, they, they, it was a status. You know, you didn't have a husband. People looked at you. It was a shame for a woman to not have a man in her life to care for her. And even it was a shame to not have children. So, there, so when you look at an Oprah and Ruth, they, they had husbands, but they were childless. So they had no children, they had no husband. And so 
we want to see what God did in Naomi's life. Even though she called herself bitter, we want to see what God did for her. And so um, and she said she was afflicted by God. But we want to see what God did for Naomi in her uh, season of pain. And so if you, we have to go to the second chapter to look a little further at how God was working in their life. In the second chapter of Ruth, this brings us over into the protection of, of Ruth. And so it said that um, in the second chapter, in the second verse, it said, And Ruth the Moabite said unto Naomi, Let me go now to the field and glean ears of corn after him in whose sight I shall find grace. And she said unto her, Go, my daughter. What I want to show to you is that Ruth had an attitude of positiveness. She had a positive attitude. Know why I say that? Because she said, I shall find grace. She said that let me go into the field and glean ears of corn after him, after him, in whose eyes, in whose sight, she said, I will find grace. So that leads me to the next question. Is pain, a, is pain not a test of faith or what God calls pain to us because of his unconditional love? So is pain not a test of our faith uh, sometimes? I say yes it is. Pain is a test of our faith. We that are in Christ, if we are experiencing pain, it is a test of our faith. And the reason why I could say it is because I was uh, going back where it say, think it not strange of the fiery trial that is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. And it say that, but rejoice. And it say, and as much as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. So this scripture lets me know that when pain comes into my life, that it's, it's for, it could be for my growth, it could be for a growth in my faith, it could be, you know, it's a, it's a good thing. It's all how I see it. And I also read here, is, um, it tells me here in James 1, Two through three, it says, consider, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. So some of the times when you are going through these trials and tribulations, you have to persevere. Go through this trial, go through these faith, I mean, go through these, these testing times, because once you go through them, that's a test of your faith. Are you going to back back or are you going to keep going? Are you going to trust God or you're not going to trust God? Amen. So your pain can be also your, your perseverance. Amen. Also, I was looking at another scripture that say that uh, we are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. So in our tests and trials, it is also to grow in our faith. Our faith can be tested so we can grow. And in the um, eight verses, say, wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perishes, Though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. And so, um, I believe that our test is to make us strong. And it is also to show God's unconditional love to us. That goes back to, like you said, uh, pain is part of life. You, you, you alluded to that earlier. Pain is a part of life. And um, as saints of God, we need to be transparent. Uh, we don't need to be trying to hide our pain. 
you know, because uh, pain becomes our greatest platform. Yes. You know, um, I think some. I think about the times I had to go through some things in my life. Pain uh, became um, my platform, you know, and everything else, you know. So when you think about it, uh, it's, it's comforting to know that no matter what we go through, God is there all the time. Even though sometimes you go through things in life and it don't look like God is there. It look like sometimes God has abandoned you, but he promised that he'll never leave you nor forsake you. You know, so uh, like you said, uh, you have to remember that pain is a part of life. You know, especially us that live God in Christ Jesus. You, you refer to the scripture of self-suffer persecution. But what makes it even worse is when the pain or the source of the pain comes from within the house. Mm -hmm. Were you asking a question? Oh, okay. Yes, that's the reason why that pain is so painful is because it becomes a spiritual wound. Because we share uh, so much commonness and we're not expecting that we are going to hurt one another because of the love of Christ. And so when we hurt one another, it's such a pain and it becomes a spiritual wound. And um, any more questions before we move forward? Okay. So now let's look at it. We're talking about the, the six... Um, Things that Ruth had to go through to receive her blessings. God made provision for her. We saw that. And he continued to make provision for Ruth. As you can see that in the second chapter, he was making provision for Ruth and for Naomi. Okay, so at this time, Ruth is going to go glean in the field of a rich and wealthy man. And his name is Boaz. And he is the relative of Naomi who, who, through her husband. Elia Meech. And um, so Ruth does, Ruth knows her, you know, how the law works as far as the next kinsman uh, when it comes to marriage, uh, how that works, uh, who, who is the next person to marry who. So what happened is that, that uh, well, Naomi knows how the law works, and so do, did Boaz. So they went uh, concerning the law when it came to marriage. So at this point, Ruth is in the field gleaning in Boaz's field. And now here comes God's protection. Ruth is noticed by uh, Boaz, and Boaz uh, find out that it's Ruth, and she is a, a, a Moabite, she is from a foreign land. And so he began to protect her by allowing her to glean. And you may ask, what is glean? Glean is when you're able to pick up what is left behind. So Boaz takes care of Ruth by making sure that she is able to glean what is left over. And in the end of the story, he ends up marrying Ruth, which makes Naomi, um, gives her a new status. She now has land. She now has a grandson, which she would call her grandson. And um, Ruth also and uh, Boaz become the, the parents of Oped. And Oped becomes the grandfather of David. And also Oped becomes in the part of the generation of Jesus Christ. So in my closing, what would I get out of this lesson? This story reminds me of Jesus Christ's love for us. We were like Ruth. We were foreigners. We didn't, be we didn't belong. We were, you know, we were in sin. We, was, we were out. And so when God looked on us, he loved us. When Boaz looked on Ruth, he loved her. And so when we look at that, how Boaz took Ruth in, Jesus took us in in a very uh, bad state. We were in a place where we couldn't take care of ourselves. We needed a savior. We needed a redeemer. We needed someone to, to uh, deliver us out of the situation that we were in. And I thank God that he delivered us out of our sins. And we got Jesus to be thankful for and I thank God for the scripture that say, thanks be to God 
who always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. And Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for the Bible study. We thank you, oh God, that you are the God who ministered to us in our pain. You are the God who heals us. You are the God who delivers us. You are the God who set us free. And we thank you, oh God, that you love us even in our pain. You love us even, oh God, when we go out astray. You pull us right back in. We thank you for your mercy and your grace that endure forever. Oh God, we thank you for your son Jesus because, oh God, through him you saved us and delivered us out of us, oh God, a situation that we could not deliver ourselves. We thank you for you are our King of Kings. You are our Lord of Lords. Oh God, you are our Prince of Peace. And we give you all the glory and all the praise. Amen. Again, on behalf of Pastor Joe L. Newsom and First Lady Annette Newsom, thank you for attending. Come fellowship with us again, and may God bless you.